What the heck is this abomination? Hold on, hold on. I can fix this. Ah, yeah. Much better. My name is Ryan, and you're watching RJR Productions. Today, we're going to be making the Mandalorian's Ambon Pulse Rifle, as seen in the Mandalorian. Also, it is fully loadable. Let's get into the build. But before we do, I have a message for you, and that is obviously to subscribe. If you don't, I'll come to your house and shoot you with this rifle. Just kidding, of course. I'm just messing with you. Now, subscribe, please, and let's get along with the build for now. So right now, I'm trying to look at some reference images for the Mandalorian's blaster, and I'm gonna make it to where you can take one of those little cartridges and load it inside, because that's actually how the gun works. And you can see in this picture that this little segment right here, it actually flips up, and then he's able to put a cartridge inside. So that's pretty much where I'm gonna start. So here's a full length image of what the blaster looks like. And pretty much I'm gonna use a PPC pipe that runs from here all the way along to here. And then if you see that if this actually runs back all the way, it'll run into this little bump right here, the top of the trigger, and it actually won't be able to run all the way back to the back of the stock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a PVC pipe and make a segment length that goes from here all the way to here, and then I have a second one that's slightly lower, and that one is going to go from here all the way to the end of the stock, and then I'll screw both of those together and put some nuts and bolts in there so they'll actually fit together. So I looked online, and it turns out that the whole thing is around 63 inches. Then we just need to find out where the joint will be. So the joint will be around here, and then we end it right here. So that's how long this segment needs to be. So now we have our two segments. We have the blue segment, which is the shorter segment, and we have the red segment, which is the longer one. So pretty much what I'm going to do is find out what the distance of this will be and what the distance of this will be so I can find out how long to make each piece of PVC pipe. We can get that the back one is 22 inches, the blue segment, and the red segment is 32 inches. Alrighty, now I got an ultra big shot so you can see how big these pieces of PVC pipe is. This is the 32 inch piece right here. You can see that it's much longer than this one. This is the 22 inch piece right here. So after a little bit of work, I now have the whole barrel all nice and connected together. Pretty much all I did is in the middle, I just drilled some holes all the way through, two holes kind of evenly spaced out, maybe like an inch and a half apart. And then I took some screws or bolts like these. These are what, two inches long. And I just drilled them through and then I put them through like this. And then I just grabbed a couple small little nuts and these are on the ends. And then it's reinforced with some hot glue on the sides and also inside here. And it's, it's a really strong connection. So it's like it, as if it was one piece. So right now what I'm gonna start working on is this housing, the metal housing in the middle and the mechanism to where you can start loading the shells inside of it. So I'll cut to the time-lapse of me doing that. So now onto the time-lapse. The first thing I did was start covering up that ugly little nut and bolt mess that I had over there. And I actually ended up having to do two layers because the first layer I did was too small but that was easily fixable. I just cut out the similar pieces and glued them on. You're gonna wanna get a really good reference image for this build because that'll definitely help you make it much more accurate and much better. Another technique that I regularly used in this build is that technique of kind of using the drill bits around just to give it like the nice texture. I ended up using it later on to mount the scope as well. But pretty much what I use the drill for is I obviously use it to connect the two pieces together, but I also drill the hole straight through the whole thing to kind of make the pivot. And that's what it is. So I pretty much just, you're probably gonna need to drill if you're gonna need to make it movable like how I did. But you don't have to do that. I just wanted to do it because I think it would have been cool. So the next step I started working on was the hinge. Now the hinge, I drilled a hole through it and then I took a little piece of plastic and rounded the edge and then drilled a hole inside of it. And that created this one like pivot that you could use and then a skewer would act as the axle and then the um, piece of plastic would act as the pivot. You can see here now that it's updated, I have the front much more fleshed out and it looks much better. And I'm pretty much just working on the housing. So now I'm working on the bit that goes below the little grip thing that you pull up and load the cartridge into. That's a pretty simple shape. Just make sure that it fits inside of the shape above it. 
Now the shaping for all the pieces that fit together to allow you to open it up, that was pretty complicated for me because I wanted to make it open so they had to work with each other, not against each other. You can kind of see that cartridge edge right here and it took me a decent amount of time to do, but I'm really happy with the outcome. Just make sure that if you want it to look very good, cover up all the corrugation once you're done. Here is that cartridge loading section in action. Once I was happy with that loading section, I ended up working backwards, so then I built that little smaller metal piece that goes behind this loading segment. Now mine actually ended up working pretty perfectly where the pivot that goes up, you know, the whole thing that you grab onto to pull the piece up, this actually was, was able to clear this back area, so I didn't have to make any modifications to this. So I just pretty much just looked at a really good reference image, modeled all the edges. As long as you have a good reference image, it should be very easy to make this whole process. And then once I had this little segment done, I worked on the bit that was below it. And this is the part that the trigger would eventually mount to in the finished product. After I had this piece done, I started doing some details. So I went to the hardware store and bought a bunch of small nuts and I just glued those everywhere where all those little small details would be. And that worked really nicely, you can see here. Now, one thing I didn't do until very later on in the process, I actually just finished that at the time of this recording, is that little detail that goes inside of that square area. You just wanna make sure to get that done and don't forget about it because it needs to be there. The stock was pretty simple. Just make sure you draw the right shape and make sure that the back edge cups your shoulder nicely because this is going to be very important in the whole ergonomics of the whole thing. Now to connect the two edges together, pretty much what I did is I cut out a really long strip of cardboard and I just made sure to crimp the edges to make sure that would fit together, kind of like on my dome. So that first piece you saw me cutting out in the last clip was actually just a demo piece. I do that a lot with just spare pieces of cardboard. And then once I was happy with that, I cut out two pieces that I would eventually glue onto the actual gun. One thing that I do recommend doing is that I recommend that you make the stock removable, at least for the painting stage, and then you can glue it on later. It'll make it much easier because mine had to stay on and the spackling stage also, I had to spackle the stock so I couldn't actually work on the gun while the stock was being done. But the stock, you kind of want to make it look organic, like a, a stick or something like that, like a big, nice, smooth piece of wood. So that's why spackling is very crucial on this. And um, parts of mine look a little bad, but most of it actually looks really good. I'm really happy with how the underside turned out. Here you can see me modeling up that kind of crimped texture. The next step for this process is spackling. So pretty much for spackling, all you need to do is just get some spackle and a cup of water, and then just rub it all over the edges and then smoothen it out. This process barely took me any time because it was so simple. I think it took me maybe around 10 minutes to do. So very easily easy spackling process on this gun. I didn't really show any sanding or painting in this process, but it's very simple. And I have a lot of information about that in my other tutorials. If you're wondering, the paint I use is spray paint. I don't use brush paints. So right here's what the trigger assembly is looking like. You can see that I kind of just used this little tube. It was actually from the top of a poster tube, just one of those caps that goes on it. So I just used that and cut that up and that adds like a nice little strong bit because if you think about it, the gun's pretty much gonna be resting on the trigger guard. So you want that to be strong. And then this is just a bunch of shapes to fit together underneath the housing of the gun. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is paint this black. And then I'm also going to paint the chamber housing black as well. Also, I'm going to be painting the shell black and then the skewer that holds the chamber on black. You can see the skewer that just holds it in there. So yeah, these are all gonna be painted black and I'm gonna go back in and paint all of them that silver color that's on the helmet. And then the next thing we need to work on are all the smaller details that go on the front and I'll be using this wooden dowel that you can barely see here. So I'm gonna quickly clean off my desk, paint these, and then we'll get back to the next step. Pretty much what I've just done here is up at the front, I've just added this little small detail and added this small bit of pipe. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is sand down the spackle back down here and then I'm going to paint the whole thing black and then I'm going to paint the midsection and then finally the back. So right now I'm working on some of the smaller details and I don't want this video to drag on too long. So pretty much I'm just going to cut back once I have them done and explain how I made all of them. All right, so here I have all the components for the gun minus the attachments that will connect the scopes together. So you saw the scope earlier. It's pretty much just pieces of cardboard wrapped around the front and then on the back. And then this piece kind of goes over the middle, kind of like right here on the whole gun. 
And this we're gonna be kind of dry brushing brown. Same as the stock, you know how it's black right now? This is black. We're going to be dry brushing them with some brown paint to make them look brown, kind of like some aged wood. And then obviously we have the little peg that goes in here and this just creates, you know, the pivot, right? And then this piece wraps around the barrel and this is what connects to these little bits. And this long black skewer, this dowel, this connects from here all the way up to the front over there. And then we just got a couple more smaller pieces and um, then we finally have the big front. And I have this on the tip right now, so I'm just gonna pull it off real quick. So this is what the front looks like and um, it's looking a little thick to me. <laughs> So I'm going to cut off like a quarter inch from each side, maybe half inch from each side, just to slim it down a little bit and I'll uh, cut to a time lapse of me putting the whole gun together right now. Right here you can see the stock. It's all nice and painted brown here. This is some better lighting on this side. But yeah, I pretty much just painted it brown and then dry brushed a little bit of lighter brown on top of it. And I've installed all the parts here. So I just need to snip this little skewer down and that'll be good. And I still need to weather this whole area with some black paint. Now moving right along, this area up here is also nice and painted. And I did the same technique with down here. And then if you look on the side, the rod and the little skewer there is also attached. And this goes all the way up to the barrel. And pretty much what I'm gonna do right now is take this little strip and paint it silver because this is going to be wrapping around the middle of this, kind of connecting that little strip right there all the way around the whole thing. And then also what I'm going to do is this edge didn't exactly line up, so there's a bit of hot glue there, so I'm gonna also paint that. And then basically all else I need to do is weather the whole thing, like the scope, and then I need to make the mounting rails for the scope that will mount off to the sides of this area. And then real quick, I'll go show you what I have with the barrel. So this is the barrel tip. Pretty much what I did is I just kind of like made it look like some distressed metal. Like it was, it has been heated and then cooled down repeatedly. So you can kind of see the coloring, discoloration I did there. And this will just slot right in the barrel. I'm gonna wrap a little bit more cardboard just to make it a little bit more secure. But yeah, got some weathering in this groove right here. And this part is all done. And then I just need to dry brush the whole rest of the gun. Thank you for making it all the way through my Mandalorian Anban Pulse Rifle video. And if you liked it, please consider subscribing down below and also leaving a comment on what you want to see me make next. Obviously for the next couple weeks I'll be making something from the Mandalorian, so look forward to that. This has been RGR Productions, signing off, till next time.